Hey everybody, Rick's back on the road again, and, and this time I'm in Elma, Washington, just outside of Olympia, about 45 minutes out, outside of west of Olympia. And today I'm, I'm going to be speaking with the artist named Ro Jest, who's my cameraman right now. You won't see him until a few minutes from now when you're watching the video. But uh, Elma's an elementary school. We're going to be speaking to about 150 third graders. And uh, we can't wait to get these kids excited about the sport, excited about possibly being future divers, or maybe even, if we're really successful, about being part of our industry someday. So we don't know what the impact of what we're going to do until we've done it. So follow us. It's be a good time. Here we are at uh, Elma School, and we're going to be teaching kids how to paint about the dive industry and all the fun and excitement they can have under the water. This is a great opportunity to take the next generation and push them into the dive industry. What a welcome. It's foggy, it's damp, I'd rather be diving. <sighs> so here goes. My name is Ronnie. My pirate name or my painting name is Ro Jest, and I turn out uh, dot paintings under my canvas name and this is one of the dot paintings that I have turned out. Today we're going to talk a little bit about some of the things that I do in my job as an artist in the underwater environment. Then I'm going to pass over to Rick and he's going to talk about some of the things he does in the underwater environment from a business standpoint. For me, life is about passion and I mean sort of enjoying life, giving something back and having fun. This is about three months worth of work. This part here is four or five layers of paint. Then a sketch goes on, and then a dot goes on, one dot at a time, with these things, which are dot sticks. This painting was created with this. One dip, one dot. One dip, one dot. When it dries, then I put the next dot on top of it. What you're going to feel in a minute with the back of your hands is sand and salt water. Ah! Somebody stop me from the ocean that's mixed in with the acrylic paint to give it that texture. Now, these are dot sticks, they're not weapons, but if anybody touches this with the front of their hand, <coughs> oh no, no, I know I can't do that, but I might be tempted. Okay, so I want you to just feel, <laughs> you're looking nervous, quickly feel it up. Okay, I want you to just feel gently, so all I want you to do is just feel that the painting has actually got a bit of the ocean in it. And what you're feeling is sand and acrylic paint. And what I thought would be kind of fun would be to have you guys help create a painting in about 25 seconds each. And you might think, huh, how's that possible? Once Rick has finished his little presentation, we're going to do a quick session where I'm going to call you up six at a time. I'm going to give you a squirt of paint. And you're going to actually add to this large canvas that we've created already and then we're going to leave the canvas in the school. Sometimes artwork can actually tell a story. So this particular painting tells the story of the bear and the salmon. And it also tells a story about how we're all connected. What am I breathing right now? Air. Mm. What are you breathing right now? Air. I mean, we're really all connected. Everything that we're sort of experiencing now, the fresh air, the blue sky, the water we drink, is all part of one thing called the environment. And the way we look after our environment is a little bit about this painting. Have a look at this. Here's the bear. He's eaten the salmon. It goes into his belly. <clears throat> I know you know the basics of biology, but as it works through, it gets pooped out, goes into the soil, this is a fact, and it's fascinating. In the tops of trees, ah! Stop it. In the tops of trees in British Columbia, they found leftover bits and DNA of salmon in trees on the tops of mountains. So this is about, here down the side when I painted this, this is the clear cutting, so we're chopping down all the trees. Not so good for the bears. The bears still get to eat the salmon. They poop them out. They get into the trees. They come up. Here's the rocks and the sand and the logs at the bottom. And here's the clear sky at the top. So this is a, a little bit of a story about the full circle of things that are going on. And this is part of the British Columbia collection. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get Rick to come up and give a short presentation on what he does. And then we're going to jump in. And I'm going to get each of you to make a bit of a contribution to the canvas. Your bits are around the edges here and you're going to use dot sticks. Rick, tell them about what you do, buddy. All right, let me help you. 
Okay, great. Well, my name is Rick, and I'm a magazine publisher. And I, I know that I've got a book, uh, I have books around here somewhere. We'll find it. Anyway, what I do is publish magazines. Besides publish magazines, um, I also am a diver. So this is me, essentially. That's what I get to do. And I'm a writer, so I'll write about it. So if I go to Venezuela or Australia or right here in the Pacific Northwest and go scuba diving or snorkeling or whatever, and then I write about my adventures, and then I tell also take pictures. So what's that? Anybody know? Turtle. That's a turtle. That's right, a sea turtle, OK? Take another picture. What's that? That's a boy having a good time, having fun. And we had to take his picture because it was so much fun. All right? And that's what I do. I tell a story in my pictures. All right? Oh, there's a story there, isn't there? Huh? That's a great picture. All right? That's a snapping turtle, different kind of turtle. Okay, what's that? Squid. Well, actually, that's an octopus. Okay? And there's a lot of octopus that live right here in the Pacific Northwest. And guess what? We have the largest species of octopus in the whole world that lives right here. And guess how big they, guess how big they get? Oh, bigger than that. From this wall to that wall, okay? And twice as tall as the ceiling, okay? Just one octopus. Absolutely huge. One suction cup this big. Just one suction cup. See how many suction cups? Thousands, thousands. So I have some friends, SpongeBob. and one of my friends isn't SpongeBob. I actually don't know SpongeBob, but I've seen him on TV. But I have another friend, and he produced a website that teaches youth, like yourself, all about the ocean. And uh, what they do is they also do jobs like mine. They educate people. They, they're writers, photographers, videographers. Now, what's a writer? Somebody who right, writes a story? Somebody who takes a picture? Somebody puts it maybe in a magazine, or somebody makes somebody like SpongeBob. Okay, that's a graphic artist. All right, all those people could be scuba divers too. So I love my job. On my website, all right, there we're going to put a video of today's adventure. And this is one of my adventures that I get to do. I'm, I'm actually having a great time today interacting with you, and so I get to share my passion of what I do, and maybe someday. You guys will see that and say, well, wait a second. I remember that Rick guy who was in my third grade class. I think I want to go and do that. I want to be a marine biologist or I want to be an animal trainer. All right? So we could be, we could help the whales, right? We could be a marine lawyer who tries to save the whales in a court of law, right? Like law and order. We could be SpongeBob and make underwater films. We could be an oceanographer. We could even be an animal trainer. There's all kinds of jobs that you could be someday. Okay? So, uh, Ronnie, we're going to pass the torch to you. Fantastic. I tell you, I want you to roll up your sleeves and listen carefully to what um, we're going to do here. So I'm going to call you up in groups of six. You get one chance only. Um, it's to turn out a hideous little underwater critter. So imagine what you can do when you all work together. Okay, so... Okay, so... One for you. Don't start yet. One for you. One for you. Listen carefully. I'm going to show you here. One for you. You stay here. Come around this side. Okay, make an eyeball. Okay, make it a bit more fishy looking. I like it. It's looking dangerous. Looking good. What is that? A banana in a blender. I like it. This is a keep this off here. If I tell you one more time, I might have to stab you with a dot stick. Very painful. <laughs> okay, so here, then now you take the screen one. Okay, we need the countdown, guys. Give me a countdown. Ten, nine, nine eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Perfect. Up, dot sticks up. Off you go. Quickly as you can. Don't think about it too much. Keep it small, though. Keep it small. Don't let it touch anything. Make a mouth, make a tail, and make a body. And that's it. And the, the, the most... The most important thing about art, guys, and listen to this very carefully, it's not about perfection. There's no, no such thing as a wrong piece of art. People say, oh, I'm no good, I can't do it. Uh, that's rubbish. Art is about creating, using your imagination. And what you have inside your heads is all you need to create wonderful art. It's about doing, not thinking too much. And this exercise is very cool because you don't get to think, you just, you just follow your motions. And it's amazing what actually turns out. 
All right, I'm standing here with Greg Scroggins, and he is the vice president, uh, vice principal, principal. excuse me, <laughs> at uh, at Elma El Elementary. Did I get that right? Yes, you did. Okay, great. Because I just roll with it here. Okay. We, really, <laughs> yeah. you know, we never stop. Okay. Uh -huh. So um, it's nice to have the program here. Really appreciate the opportunity. Um, what is it meant to the kids? Oh, it's uh, it's been great. Uh, what's neat is the little bit that I was in the classroom today, mm -hmm. just getting a chance to watch, just looking at the eyes uh, of the kids. They were listening, they were focused, they were, this was interesting, and, and plus you guys were uh, presenting in a high interest way, you know, there's, there's, there's life, there's, you know, it just helps the kids uh, connect to the message that, that you're bringing to the, to the kids, and yeah, it went extremely well. I know teachers have been commenting, though, they come in and go, it's going very well, it's going well. Hey, we're finishing up the end of the day, and uh, this is Kim Stenick. This is the reason that we're here. She invited, invited Ronnie and I to come uh, to here to talk with the kids and inspired us, and then we tried to inspire the kids. So it all started with somebody pushing the snowball, right? Yeah, I think you're probably right about that, or starting the bonfire. Yeah, starting a bonfire, yeah. absolutely. Somebody's going to lend us their log, and, and then somebody has to, to dream it up. So thank you so much for inviting thank us. So hopefully much. we made an impact here. We enjoyed having them so much. If you get a chance, make sure you um, go to the... Uh, let's see, the Pacific Dive Expo. Or Dive Expo, yep. yeah. And um, you might get a chance to see these two. They are wonderful people. So thank you so much. That's for being awesome. Part of that. Thank you. Okay.